Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how I make the um, paper covers for my little notebooks. I make one of these probably once a month to carry around with me to jot down notes or, um, you know, grocery lists, just the random things you have to write down. Now, when I make my um, chipboard covers, I like for the paper to wrap all the way around. But if you try to just cut it, you can do this by hand, but um, I'm going to show you how to make it so you have, you can save the cut file on your silhouette and cut it whenever you're ready so that the paper wraps around the edges and you don't have any exposed chipboard. Um, this is just a personal preference for me. I don't like to sit and paint the chipboard and I don't like for it to show through the sides. So this is what I do. Um, but you could just do this by hand. You don't need a silhouette to do it. But anyways, I'm gonna, going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool on the left hand side of the screen and draw a rectangle. Select it and then go to my scale window and it's already open here and I'm going to modify this so that it's seven inches by six inches or excuse me by five inches. And my finished album front is going to be four by six but I need this extra inch for to fold over on each side. Then I'm going to go back to my draw rectangle tool, draw another rectangle and select it and it doesn't matter the size because I can change it over here and I'm going to change the sizing to half an inch so it's going to be a half an inch by half inch square okay so I need four of these and you can do this one of a few ways I could cut and paste or I could just go up to my replicate window select it and select row of four so since I need four I'm going to just make four so now I have my four little squares and I'm going to put each one in the corners. And this is what's going to take care of the bulk on my album when I go to fold the flaps over. And I actually did record the, the process of making this. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about where it takes care of the corners for me so I don't have to trim it. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing go back up to the top right hand corner of my screen and up here you're going to see, see a little square that looks like an M and that's your modify window and I'm going to subtract and what subtract does is it uses the shapes that are in the front to cut a shape into the image that's in the back so when I click it you'll see that it did some um, in some places it worked and cut away and at some places it didn't so I'm going to hit control Z and I'm actually going to zoom in and what I need to make sure of is that there's actually an overlap. So like this one, it's a little too low. So I'm just going to move it, oh, unselect. I'm going to move it up and then move it over. And I'm going to do that with each one so that it's taking out a little cut on the outside. So that way it's there's something to subtract. Because if they can't subtract it, it's just going to weld it together. Okay, so now I have my spacing. So you can see if I zoom in on this one here and move over, there's just a little bit hanging out. So it'll be able to subtract. So I'm going to zoom all the way back out, highlight the entire image again, and then hit subtract. And now you'll see I have perfectly little corners nicked on the side. Now these are my front pages. So, and I want to do this for the front cover and the back cover, so I'm going to select it, right click, hit copy, and then click again and hit paste. So now I have um, a front and a back cover. Now the other thing I need to do is create my sentiment. Okay, so you can see I've opened a new tab down here at the bottom. I apologize, I had to walk away from the computer for a moment. But um, the shapes I just created are on this tab here. and. I'm going to put my sentiment on a second page so I can load all the different colors in the machine at once and be able to cut out um, each layer. So I'm going to go to my library and I'm going to open the um, image or a cut file I want to use for the front of my notebook and it says daily notes and it's an image from the silhouette studio online store if you're looking for it and i believe it's by carla dudley or cara dudley i'm gonna show properties it's carla carla dudley and you get it from the online store so i'm going to double click so it opens up 
on my um, carrier sheet. Now, what I'm going to do is select, um, computer's running a little slow, I'm sorry. I'm going to select the, the red rectangle up here for my page options and I'm going to reveal the carrier sheet. So what I'm doing is making that white paper you see transparent so I can see what the carrier mat would look like. That way I can use the grid lines as a form of measurement because these images are grouped together. I don't want to scale them together in proportion, but the measurement on the side obviously is not accurate because it's taking it this gap into account. So I know I want it to be two and a half by five or so inches, this daily. So I'm going to stretch that out and that looks about right. It's not, not quite five, but that looks good. So I'm going to take my image and I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit ungroup. That way I can move this word notes off to the side so I can cut it separate. Now, when you open images from the online store that you purchased from somewhere, they're usually already in proportion or scaled to, to each other. So if you buy one of the images in the store that's like a little pirate or a doll or whatever and it comes with clothes that you can cut out, all you need to do is scale with all, like resize it using the arrows with it all connected and all the pieces will scale in proportion to each other, then ungroup and move it on your mat as you need to so that you can cut the clothing or whatever it is that you're creating. So I have, my, like I said, I have my um, image sized here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit copy. And I'm gonna right click again and hit paste. And the reason I'm doing this is because one part of this is going to be my gray outline. And then the second piece is going to be the blue polka dot paper that's in the background, the blue and um, cream paper. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select this daily one more time, right click, hit ungroup, and then right click again and hit release compound path. And that way I can manipulate all of these red lines individually so that I can cut a backer piece to glue my outline on so I can layer them without having to, um, on top, you'll see what I mean when I put it together. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to delete all of these interior lines. Now sometimes, if you're not 100% sure you're deleting what you're supposed to be deleting, my suggestion is to just cut it on copy paper because sometimes you think you're deleting what you should and you're not. And really, it's kind of like, I, I like to describe it as geometry. Some people are really good at it because they're good at thinking in the future and 3D shapes and how things translate and some people really aren't. And if you're one of those people that aren't, that, you know, just isn't good at it, it's fine. Uh, with a little bit of practice, you'll remember what needs to go and what should stay. But anyways, I'm going to zoom out. Oh, a little too far. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. And you can see I have my background part, and this is going to be what's blue. My gray part that I'm going to cut out that's going to layer on top, and it's going to kind of look like applique, and then the word notes. So that way I can strategically place my paper when it cuts out. So I'm going to send this to Silhouette and you'll see me put together the project in just a few minutes. Okay, you can see that I have my um, pieces cut out and they're laying on my mat and that blue polka dot piece is going to be my interior image and then the gray is going to be the outline and I actually use Krylon spray adhesive on these more intricate pieces to keep them together in the permanent bond. Make sure you don't use these on your mat.
my cover um, was definitely inspired by a layout I saw on Nicole McGorick's blog. And what I, the paper I really loved on the whole layout was this yellow paper with the flowers with the gray hearts. But what I didn't realize is that she had punched those hearts after the fact and that they weren't printed on the paper. Okay, and here's my completed project. You'll be able to see in a second when I turn it over that I've laminated the back. And that's it. Thanks for watching.